Hello. I see Stormy in the chat. Hey, Stormy. Uh, let's see. Moving some things around so I can do what I gotta do. That's not the right window. Get out of here. There we go. There's my chat. Okay. So here's what today's plan is. Um, I basically don't have work until May at the earliest. Um, neither does McKella. In fact, there's a very good chance McKella might not have work again until September. Ooh. Um, and Freya doesn't have work till May again. So, what we are doing here, uh, one is I'm regretting putting the camera on one side and the microphone on the other. But beyond that, uh, I have here a magic set editor. So first off, if you are a Wizards of the Coast employee, get the hell out. Unless you want to hire me. In which case, I will stop the stream right now. Um, now, here's the difference, though. Fred, uh, Red not having to work is not having to get work and getting emergency pay. I'm not. Uh, but anyway, so this is Magic Set Editor. The idea here is we are going to make a fully-fledged Magic the Gathering set, and we are going to make it together. I'm going to be doing the brunt of it, but if you have ideas of things that you think would be cool in a game about wizards throwing monsters and spells at each other, you bring it up in chat. And we will find a place to put it. Now, I have already made a design skeleton. So we're going to go over what this skeleton has. Uh, so, we have five basic lands. Uh, that every single set after, I think, Tempest had them. These are our five basic lands. We will pick art for them later. Art is our last thing here. We have ten common artifacts. We have 22 commons of each color. Um, we have 10 dual lands, because the last two core sets had 10 dual lands uh, that you can pick up in the basic slot. Uh, we have to get through all these commons. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. We have two mythics of each color. Uh, we have a couple three color mythics that we are going to figure out what we want. Mythics are going to be the last on our chopping block. Uh, we have 10, uh, we have 10 artifacts of each rarity, except for Mythic. We might squeeze a Mythic artifact in there later. We have, uh, what is it here? 11, hey, 10, get in order. Eh. We have 11 rares of each color. We have a couple rare land slots. We might not use all five. Uh, and we have 10, or... 14 uncommons of each color, plus one uncommon of each color pair. Okay. Uh, and then we have five uh, uncommon land slots. Well, there's a very good chance we'll only use two of those. This is a little bit more than Core Set 2019 and 2020 had. Um, what I want to do is we're going to stream a little bit of this day by day. Uh, and we are going to slowly make a couple of sets together. And the first one's a core set, and core sets are the easiest to make, but core sets are going to uh, inform what our next three sets for the year are going to be. And we are not beholden by things that Wizards of the Coast is. Wizards of the Coast, of course, being the company that makes Magic the Gathering, uh, which is why, under legal terms, this is like a fanfic, uh, this is like an author reading a fan fiction. They can't be here. Uh, this is a fan fiction set, essentially. This is us going, oh man, I wish magic had blank, so we're going to do this. This is our slow burn coffee shop AU for Magic the Gathering. Except with still wizards throwing spells at each other's faces. Um, this one's going to be pure fantasy. Maybe a little sci-fi thrown in for flavor. The three next sets we're going to build together can be anything. We could make a Skyrim set. Uh, I know I personally was working on a Fallout set for a while, and a Harry Potter set for a while, um, and I've also been working on a set that's redoing one of Magic's old sets, uh, and I've been making a set that's me taking all the original Yu-Gi-Oh cards and turning them into Magic cards. But this set's going to be pure Magic, and we're going to start with the comments. So one of the first things we do 
when we make a set is we're going to treat the commons like we're making a cube. And since this is a core set, about 60 of the cards are going to be existing Magic the Gathering cards. So we are going to be free to pull on any Magic the Gathering card that does not have an auxiliary mechanic that is not reserve listed. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in the first couple of years of the game's life, uh, in order to avoid some bad press with a lot of the collectors, they created a thing called the reserve list, and it said that the rares from certain sets could not be reprinted ever. Only the ones that existed got to continue to exist, and only about three cards have ever been removed from the reserve list. So those three cards were fine. Uh, but we're going to treat this like we're making a real Magic Core set. Uh, when it comes to the three new sets we're going to make after this, uh, and we're not doing these all tonight. This is going to be a multi-day project. Because um, I have nothing to do for April, so might as well. And having you guys in the chat both helping me and egging me on, I feel will help me finish this. Uh, and of course, as we go on, I am more than happy to help you understand how to play Magic the Gathering as we go as we build this set together. Um, because one of the things we can do with a custom set is I don't believe you can actually see it in your window. Uh, but I have an exporter program, and that exporter program is going to make it so that if you're running the program Cockatrice or the program Tabletop Simulator, you can play with our custom sets. I actually got to play with uh, Beacon of Creation's custom set, uh, Castmire, they're currently on Milestone 1, over on Tabletop Simulator over the weekend with uh, one of their hosts, Adam. Hey, Adam. If you're here, if you're not, and you watch this on YouTube, still hey, in the past, or the future. Wait, who am I, who's my friend of reference for that? I don't know. Uh, so the idea is this one's going to be our custom set of everything we think is cool. We have to pull almost purely from fantasy and sci-fi. No licensed stuff. So we can't put a Turian in here. Uh, but we could put in something like a ray gun. Uh, now, if we made a Mass Effect set later, we could totally put a Turian in it. Because the later sets, we can make fan sets. Uh, oh, a Moon Fairy. Now, that's a fun idea. Uh, fairies are a creature type, as are Moon Folk. Um, and I think sneaking in a Fairy or a Moon Folk is a great idea. Because a core set should be our introductory set for new players. Uh, a Turian, Stormy, by that I mean a character like Garrus from Mass Effect. Uh, I know you're more of a Transformers fan, much like myself. So, for example, uh, there is only currently one Transformer card in Magic the Gathering. It's Grimlock. He has his own card. He is what we call a DFC, a dual-faced card. So, one side, he is Grimlock, strongest of all Dinobots. And the other side, he is a big rampaging Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, but that requires dual-faced cards, which are not an evergreen mechanic. Or a dis uh, they're kind of a deciduous mechanic, but I would like to avoid fandoms that aren't magic in a core set. Um, also, Grimlock was silver-bordered. We're not going to be bound by silver-border rulings here. We're going to go straight black-border, uh, which means that this will be tournament legal. Not in real tournaments, unless your friends are super cool. Well, I, still, that wouldn't be an official tournament. That'd be, like, with your buddies. But if your friends are super cool, they'll let it happen. All right, so we're going to go back up to our commons, because commons are where we want to go. Uh, if you look here on our little right-hand side, we have our rarity symbol. Um, Grimlock was a limited run, and he was only in foil. So he's really cool, but I think he's like 35 bucks. Um, anyway, so uh, our rarity symbols are going to indicate how rare the card is, as is true in all magic sets, uh, with the scale of black to silver to gold to rose gold. Uh, or, I guess it's Mythic Orange. But I don't know any orange metals that are more valuable than gold. So I guess we can call it Orichalcum? I guess it's Orichalcum. Anyway, uh, so we are going to first start by trying to figure out what our archetypes are going to be. Uh, so, what is an archetype? An archetype is when you are drafting, you pick two colors, and those two colors have to synergize in a certain way. Uh, for an example, in Corset 2019, if you picked white and blue, you wanted to have a mixture of white cards, blue cards, and artifacts. And they helped you fly. Uh, and flying monsters can dodge things easier. Thank you, uh, 
happy. I am a little bit uh, more trimmed up than usual. I actually went completely clean shaven about three weeks ago when this whole quarantine stuff started off. Um, for those of you in the far future, 2020 was a hellscape and we're only in like April. Um, I've since trimmed it up. Mikella was not a fan of me clean shaven. So I'm trying to grow it back and I'm currently in the tiny knives stage of my beard where it is super itchy. Because, like, stubble's fine and long is fine, but there's an area in the middle I can't stand, and I'm trying not to pick at my face. Because also, you're not supposed to touch your face anyway. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. I do appreciate that. I, I, I feel good. Um, partially because part of the reason I don't have work till June is I quit a job. Um, I quit a job that I knew I was going to get fired from in June anyway. I'm sorry, I said June. I meant May. I don't work till May. Um, I was going to get fired from my other job in June. And I was on contract to work till June. But I got another job, didn't pay as well, but way less stress and much closer to home. No more commute. Like, I would only have to commute one day a week plus one day a month. So five days out of the month would I have to commute. And I get paid for the mileage on the fifth day, which is the long one. Yay. Um, but uh, I take a bit of a pay cut, which is fine because I would have so much less stress. And I was supposed to start originally on the 30th. And then I told them, hey, I can bump that up to the 19th. And then our county shut down on the 17th. Whoops. So I'm locked out of the system entirely. Mm. Um, but when I say no commute, I mean, if I wanted to, I could walk to work some days. Except for that one day a week I have to commute. Like, it is a 20-minute walk or a 3-minute drive. It's fantastic. Um, anyway. But I have another job, I realized. Uh, it's this, which I haven't done in forever because my last job was so stressful I never had the energy. Um, and while I miss the kids I worked with at my other job that I left, uh, I knew it was limited, and this job they want to keep me. So, yay. And Twitch, I assume you guys want to keep me. And I can do the other job and Twitch compared to the old job. So here we are. Anyway, magic, 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 magic. Um, yes. Okay, so let's go over the five colors of magic. We have white. The power of purity and morals and virtue and light and morality. Uh, this is the color of angels and soldiers and kitties. Everyone loves kitties and also good doggos. There are a lot of good doggos in white. Um, just for a few examples of some good doggos in white, let me flip this around real quick. Let's go to type line. Uh, I find it ridiculous that they won't let you call dogs dogs in magic. They are hounds. But here we are. Uh, okay, let me jump around there. Boop. Mm -hmm. So let's make this bigger. So y'all can see the doggos. And we are specifically looking for a doggo. Oh, hey, bingo. Uh, he's a silver border. I should have told it only uh, black border cards. Uh, here we go. Like Boros Mastiff here. He's a good doggo. That, that guy over there. Or uh, Chakram Retriever, he's in blue, but he's an elemental, which is elemental Trump's dog in the color typings. Uh, Hellhounds kind of have the same thing going. Elementals are typically red or blue or occasionally green. Uh, that poor Gatehound there, he could probably use some lovin'. Um, but you know who is a great dog? If I can find him here, Isamaru. Look at Isamaru. He is such a nice doggo. He, he is th just there to protect people, and I love him. Um, and like I said, kitties are also in white. Uh, cats sometimes show up in green or black. Uh, and then, of course, the elemental ones show up where the elements are. So same kind of rule there. Because what's the point of a cat if you can't make one out of fire? All right. So uh, one thing is I think we need uh, hounds in white. I think that is important. Uh, we also are going to need a couple of other things here. We need to figure out our archetypes, like I said. So, white is morality and togetherness and protection. Blue is being smarter than your opponent. It's air and water. I know blue-white control is always done, but I think blue-white control is the way to go here, because it's always either that or flyers. Uh, you know what? I know what we didn't put in, and we could desperately use. We need a archetype card. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use an archetype card here. So in this program, I'm going to go to a checklist card. Ha ha. 
we're going to use this for our archetype card. So, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green, white. And I guess I could just do them all down the left here. Um, white, black, blue, red, black, green, red, white, and green, blue. So these are our 10 color combinations that we're going to focus on. This is a core set. We're going to do two color combos. That's what you do in a core set. You do two color combos. Now, does this mean every card is going to be both colors? No, of course not. But this does mean that we are going to use... Uh, when you're drafting, you're normally going to end up in one color with a second color helping. And when you have that, you know what to look for. Uh, so I think blue-white being control is a good way to go here. Uh, the fact that we want hounds tells me that I think red-white should be at, uh, aggressive decks. And aggressive decks backed up by elementals and soldiers and doggos and flaming kitties. And I love the whole idea. Um, blue-black often ends up either in control or in mill. And I think mill is a good way to go here. Mill is named for the millstone. Millstone is an old artifact card, which we might end up reprinting, reprinting in our set. Uh, mill is the idea that I'm not going to attack your life. In Magic the Gathering, you start with uh, 20 life and 40 or 60 cards, depending if you're playing limited or constructed. We're going to build this set with limited in mind. Uh, mill is a really good strategy in limited because you don't attack their life, you attack their deck. Because if a, care if a player ever has to draw from their deck of cards, which we call the library, uh, and they can't because there's nothing left, they lose. Now, something to remember with magic is every rule is a rule unless a card says otherwise. So if you ever think to yourself, oh... Well, I have this card that says something else. The card trumps the general rule. So if I tell you that power is what we base damage off of, and you have a card that says, no, it's based off of toughness, then we base it off of toughness. That's how it works. Okay. Uh, and the idea being that the 20 points is your life. That's your body. The library is all of what's in your mind. So if I kill you by lowering your, your life, you died. If I kill you by lowering your library, you went insane. Or you forgot all of your magic. And I get a moral victory. There are other cards that will make other win conditions. And we might make a few of those too, but that's further down the road. We need to make our meat and potatoes uh, before we make our cake. Uh, yes, there is a graveyard. So, uh, the zones in magic, you have library, which is your deck. Uh, you have your hand. You have the battlefield, you have the graveyard, you have exile, and you have phase. But we are not going to use phase, because phase is not an evergreen mechanic. What I mean by evergreen and deciduous mechanics, you have three types of mechanics you're going to run into. Set specific, deciduous, and evergreen. Evergreen mechanics are in basically every set. Unless there's a very good reason for it not to be in that set, it's in that set. Creatures that fly. Creatures that are so big they stomp all over everything. That's called trample. Uh, creatures that are so fast that they can ignore summoning sickness. That's haste. Those all exist in every single set. Uh, deciduous mechanics are mechanics that show up sometimes, show, don't show up other times, like vehicles, which are artifacts that turn into creatures if you tell a creature to pilot it. So cars aren't in every set or boats aren't in every set, but they're in some sets. And then you have specific mechanics like embalm, which is I'm going to turn this creature into a mummy. Well, that only makes sense in Amenket, which is an Egyptian-themed set. Uh, if you were in Theros, which is the Greece-themed area, or plane, or world, or whatever. A plane. Plane's the right term, but I'm trying to s simplify it for new people. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to have mummies in ancient Greece. So, cards from Theros don't embalm. Cards from Innistrad, which is all about vampires and werewolves, don't embalm. But cards from Amenket, which is all about Egypt, they can embalm. So anyway, uh... So we, we, want, we will have some things that focus on the graveyard that's tr probably going to be in black. Um, so normally black does a lot of that. Sometimes blue does a little bit of that. Um, and green does a lot of that. So I think our black-green uh, one, which is nor 
which is a very open-ended format, is going to be Graveyard Matters. But I'm going to put a note here of Revive. Specifically, we want to pitch things into our... I called it a Graveyard. That's not the right word. There we go. Uh, we want to revive our big creatures for cheaper. Green normally has big, expensive monsters. Black normally likes to cheat. So black-green being a, revivica a revivification deck makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay. Uh, going down the list here, red is very reckless and black likes to cheat, like I mentioned, but it also likes to be a little risky when it cheats. Uh, sacrifice is typically a very good theme to have here because those sacrificing cards will synergize with our Graveyard Matters set. The Graveyard Matters black cards will synergize with our mill because we could mill ourselves to get our big creatures into the graveyard, toss them into the bin, and then use the black cards to or the green cards to cheat them out. So we want ones that make sense with each other. Black and red like to gamble. Uh, all of the ga almost all the gambling cards are in black and red. So like, for example, uh, a card we won't be using in this set, but a lot of people love is called Goblin Game. And Goblin Game is a red card. So... For example, if we were to play the Goblin game, uh, you have to guess how many items behind my back are in my right hand. Right now, you have to pick. How many are in my right hand behind my back? And then if you guess right, I get a benefit. And if you guess... That's right. If you guess right, you get a benefit. And if you guess wrong, I get a benefit. And it, you don't know how, what's back there. It could be anything. It could be a boat. It could be a bunch of magic cards. It could be specifically a couple of pens. Um, and then you also have to call over a judge to, sometimes to ask them, does this pad of post-it notes count as a single object or does it count as 150 separate objects? By the way, the answer was two. I had two in my right hand. I put the third one in my left hand. Haha, -ha, that was to trick you. Now then. Um, so yeah, sacrifice though, that's typically going to be, I'm going to put in creatures that want to die and then I'm going to kill them. I'm going to have some other creatures that want my creatures to die. Uh, and this is typically going to be in either red, black, or red, white. Or sorry, red, black, or black, white. Because black likes death. Death is black's element. Uh, but I want to go with the riskier version of sacrifice. So we're going to put it in red, black, I think, compared to white, black. Uh, red and green, that almost always becomes stompy. Stompy being an aggressive strategy about bigger creatures compared to Red White's version, which is small, fast creatures. Red White wants to Zerg Rush. Uh, green Red, they would much rather uh, make one big dude super fast for a moment. Uh, and it's almost always Stompy. You could potentially do Burn. Uh... You could potentially do Burn in that, but Burn makes more sense in tempo which is down here in blue red so we're gonna make this a burn tempo great and uh, i think we will make this stompy because stompy synergizes with the aggro of red white and then the sacrifice and the burn kind of synergize the control and the burn synergize a lot better uh green white's gonna be weird that one we wanted oh a death doll um explain what you mean about a death doll and we'll get back to that um so now we're stuck with the three hardest combinations. Green-white. White likes little creatures. Green likes big creatures. So you either always end up with gr with go tall or go wide. I personally prefer go wide. But I know a lot of people prefer go tall. So, hmm. If only there was a way to combine them. And I think there could be, but we have to do it in a later set. Uh, but we already have go tall and stompy. Stompy is known to be a go tall strategy. So I think green-white's going to be go wide. And I realize a lot of cubes I make end up with these archetypes. Uh, because I like these archetypes. Um, White-black. White-black, I almost always put life gain. I don't want to put life gain. Even though I almost always do it. I think it can be fun to go with a creature type instead. Um, knights, I feel, are a good fit there, but... They were just done in Throne of Eldraine. On the plus side, that gives us a lot of cards to use for our 60% reprints. But on the other hand, that does make it a little hard to look different and make it a dream set. 
Um, though knights do synergize with aggro, and they do synergize kind of well with sacrifice, but not great. Um, I could do vampires, but that was more Ixalan's vampire specifically. And so while we might... One, one rule we are going to have with this is we want to visit every plane that's already been visited at least once. So that's a big list. Like, Dominaria is going to be easy, but Ixalan, we have to pick a card from Ixalan Arrivals of Ixalan or Explorers of Ixalan to reprint in this set. Uh, I'm still tempted to say Knights, or... Or... We could go weird with it. There's not a lot of black cat support. But there could be. And cats normally care about life. And I do like life gain in white. So. What if we did. What I'm going to call kitty cat life gain. And that will give us an excuse to make some new kitties. Everyone likes new kitties. Now green blue is the weird child. Um, it's almost always. Uh. Plus one, plus one counters. Just how it is. Uh, and I don't know if I want to do plus one, plus one counters. I'm, I'm so tempted to do something new and exciting, but this is a core set, and this is to get, one, new players into magic and give them an idea of what a color typically does. And typically, blue-green does plus one, plus one counters. Uh, or it does lands, which is also weird. Both can work, though. Okay, let's see here. Imagine a doll that looks cute, kind of like a Raggedy Ann doll that may steal from your library while distracting the monsters on the field? Hmm. Steal from my own library? Okay, there's a lot of places to move with that. We will come back to the death doll idea. Um, I like it. Draining other monsters of health would be minus one, minus one counters, which we want to keep out of a core set. But... I do like the idea of, like, a doll that possesses a creature. Ooh, that doesn't quite fit with our mill strategy, but I do like it. That feels more like a rare or a mythic. So hold on to that idea. We will come back to that. Because that sounds really neat. I do love the idea of, like, a little doll that latches onto somebody and takes them over. Uh, it reminds me of the Lissids, but the Lissids are more like weird little crab tick things. Uh, Alright, you know what? We're going to do plus one, plus one counters. There we go. Uh, how is Red doing? Red's doing okay, um, except for right this moment. They currently have uh, a small stomach bug, so they are eating soup and playing Skyrim in the other room. Uh, Mikella is currently helping with Red's recovery. Uh, so I'm in here doing a stream about making magic cards, because why not? Um, I think it's fun. I think making magic cards is a treat, personally. Uh, and I love to do it. So, we have our archetypes. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out cards that fit these archetypes very, very well. Um, and, hmm, what to do, what to do. Okay. So, we have... Well, I will say this. If we have a mill card, we need to put in mill stone. So I'm going to go up here. We're going to go up to uh, Millstone. I'm doing this in a window you guys can't see at the moment. Because I'm just going to steal Millstone's text. And I'm going to see what rarities it's been in. Uh, it has been a rare and it has been an uncommon. And most of its recent printings were uncommons. Its most three recent printings were uncommons. So we are going to go down to our uncommon artifacts, even though we are starting in our... Uh, commons and we are going to make millstone and millstone is uh, a very weird little card it is a two mana artifact which makes me think I shouldn't have put it there bloop go back I'll put it here ha -ha. there we go this one already had a two and millstone has a very simple block of text which is pay two, 
and tap the card. Tapping means you turn the card 90 degrees. I like to turn to the right. Um, and they put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. And it can go in any color deck, and it's very straightforward. And it is a good indicator to new players, hey, you're going to be milling. Because the guy who named it is right here. It's Millstone. Uh, I will tell uh, them that you've... One, I'll tell them you said hello, Affy. And I'll tell that, them that you hope they feel better, Stormy. Um, an ankle biter. You mean like a little kid? I guess like a little kid. Uh, hmm. Oh, you know who I think would be a great one-drop artifact creature for us? Even though I... Oh yeah, I could put a one-drop artifact creature right here. An artifact creature is a creature that is both an artifact and a creature. This would be like your robots. This would be your... Um, your little buddies. Uh, I think Sparring Construct. Fits in this set perfectly. Especially if we have a plus one, plus one counters matter theme. And a sacrifice theme. Because Sparring Construct fits both of those very, very well. It is a construct. It is a 1-1 one, one for 1. It is from Dominaria. So right there, we have fit uh, our need for a Dominaria card. It's not an iconic Dominaria card, but it does the job. Okay. Mir, Thopter, Servo, maybe. We will look into those. We will look at... When we get to the one card we need from Mirrodin, we can definitely do a Thopter. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in my little window here. Because like I said, we have to go to every plane Magic Spend 2 so far in this set. Uh, purely for fun, but that's what we got to do. And... Do, 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 do. And we want a... Where are you? There we go. A zombie toddler. There have been zombie toddlers. That's doable. That's doable. Okay. Uh, so I have a list of all of the planes we've been to. Uh, Alara is going to end up getting five just because of how Alara works. But every single plane has to be visited at least once if it showed up in an actual uh, set. So Arcos is out. That's just going to be Zetheros. Um, but we can move on from there. Zombie Toddler. Okay, so one other thing we have to do is we have to make sure that all of the iconic creature types are included here. Uh, so what that means, if I'm going to go back up here. So white. We need to have... Soldiers, knights, humans. We already know there's going to be cats because of our kitty cat life gain deck. Oh, and of course, most important for white, angels. All right. Blue. We need to have serpents. We need to have sphinxes. We need to have merfolk. We need to have vidalcan. We need to have all of them. Maybe it can be low health and go little bits of chip damage. Uh, I think you're right. I think we want to figure out what colors we need to have in first. A uh, little diamond's the color of the symbol, by the way. Uh, black, we definitely need a zombie. At least one zombie. We need to have vampires. We need to have a demon. So we just need all of those. Um, red, we're going to need goblins. We're going to need... I personally like putting in dinosaurs in red and green, especially since we have Stompy, uh, but we don't need them. We do need dragons. Uh, green, we are definitely going to need uh, beasts. We're going to need elves. And we are going to need hydras. And then colorless, we need a construct and we need a golem. That's the easiest ones. And oof! We might end up with an oof. I won't deny the fact that oofs can happen. Especially since we've already decided there has to be at least one fairy in blue. 
Um, because a moon fairy sounds like a fantastic idea. Um, it might be a boggle. We might do a boggle. But let's see here. Uh, so an oof is a cousin of a fairy, but since green creatures traditionally don't fly, uh, they get oofs. So in magic, a pixie or a sprite would be considered a fairy, but a leprechaun would be considered an oof. Because oofs are fairies that don't fly. Uh, a boggle is a type of an oof. So if I went over here and I pulled up, say, the slippery bogle, and I call it a boggle, it's really a bogle. I'm saying it wrong. It's really a bogle. You, you ogle the bogle or goggle the boggle. Um, bu 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 this fella. This is a bogle. Bogles are scary, but they can do mean things, and I think having a bogle might be a lot of fun. In fact, hmm, that makes me think. That makes me think. Maybe we have the wrong archetype for green-white. Maybe green-white should not be go-wide. Maybe it should be auras. And that allows us to better fit in a new bogle. Uh, so, we could definitely get away with having a slippery bogle. Even though this bogle is a beast and not an oof. Uh, I believe I could have sworn some of the bogles were oofs. I might be confused on that. Anyway, uh, so we have one artifact creature down. I think the first couple of things we want to make sure we have... I'm touching my face, which I'm not supposed to do. Um, we need to make sure that we have what I'm going to call our meat and potatoes cards. These are cards that sum up the color immediately at one mana at instant speed for what we're doing. Uh, we also need another one at sorcery speed... It explains what we're doing. Um, we are going to avoid poison in a core set. There is a mechanic called poison. We might do it in one of our three follow-up sets. Um, so, one of the first ones that I always argue we need, some people prefer its secondary version, uh, which is Druid of the Cowl. I think Lana War Elves is always Green's meat and potatoes card. Uh, Lana War Elves give it a second to load here, it is an elf druid. It is a 1-1, one, one, so 1 power, 1 toughness. Deals 1 damage, can take 1 damage. And let's pull up our uh, secondary window. Hey, it's still a bogle. But let's change him to Lanawar Elves. And Lanawar Elves allows us to get our Dominaria card in again. And this one's much more uh, identifiable as a Dominaria card. Uh, thing is, I don't know if I like this flavor text. Let's find another flavor text. Looking at all the prints. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, I really like that one better. I like the art on the new one better. But I like the flavor text here better. So, the big reason you want Llanowar Elves is because of this little ability here. Tap. Add. Green. Llanowar Elves can count as a... Uh, oh, let me get that out of the way. Boop. There we go. Lana War Elves can count as a forest, kind of. It can give you green mana to cast your green spells. Because every spell, whenever you see a pip, so like if I looked at this fill-in for uh, common blue number six, it needs five mana total, four can be any color, one has to be blue. Lana War Elves here costs a single green mana, and after it's no longer summoning sick, can give you a single green mana every turn. As long as it's not frozen. Blue freezes. Uh, but it can, if it's unfrozen, it can give you what you need. Uh, since we're down here, I would argue that what blue needs to have... I'm going to drop this to a single one. Bloop. Blue needs opt. Blue always needs opt. Uh, and opt is scry one. Draw a card. And as you can see there from the reminder text, scry. You look at the top card of your library, you put on the top or put on the bottom, uh, and then you can draw a card. It's a very straightforward spell. Uh, now, here's where I go the other way. I think Lightning Bolt is too strong. Shock is where we want to do for our direct damage spells. Deal two damage to any target. 
this is another good reprint. A Killer Hot Pot. I don't... Do you, do you mean like the, the, the soup thing? Do you mean like the soup thing? Okay, any valid target. Oh, wait. You can't shock the bird. That's true, but you can shock a land of war elves. So, that'll help you. And, of course, in the uncommon slot, we're going to put lightning strike. It's just that lightning bolt is too strong at three damage, because then we have to ramp up all the creatures, and then we're stuck in a power creep situation, which is where Yu-Gi-Oh! ended up. We don't want that. Uh, so, of course, we have our blue... Um, we have our green, we have our red, uh, black, and white. Black, I personally think the best one for this kind of vibe of what am I going to put in that feels this way is Duress. Uh, I personally love Duress. I love the, uh, Ixalan art for Duress more than anything. I love that art. Um... Because we're looking at one mana spell specifically. Doomblade's fun. I prefer murder. Um, so. Uh, though when we do duress. I do not like. The original art. And I especially do not like the original art. When it's Liliana's flavor text. So here. Just to show y'all what I mean. Boop. And a boop. So this is the old art for duress. It's, uh, it's a little scary. She's got them needles. They're going to come stab her in the face. Nobody wants to deal with this. Uh, now, there is this duress, which is a spear coming out of a dude. That's somehow better. This is my favorite duress. It's a dude lost at sea. I love this duress. I'm also pretty cool with this duress. Has Zergo Bell Striker being screamed at by Kolagon, the dragon, uh, the dragon lord of the Kolagon tribe, um, or Duress's art, which has Dak Faden, who did not deserve the stupid death he got in the uh, War of the Spark trailer. Uh, and I'm still mad about that. It's been a year now, and I'm still mad about that. Uh, or we have this Duress, which is like fine. But also, like, the person who's writing about how they're going to torture people in this flavor text is one of our heroes now. So, no thank you. I personally like this one here. Um, I'm very fond of this particular duress art. Which is right here. It's great. We're just going to title that one Duress. It's going to load a second. And there we go. Whoop, hit the wrong button. We're going to hit save, though. Save's a great button to hit right now. Uh, yeah, we don't want the needle woman. Yeah. Yeah, the, the tiny needles coming at your face. I don't like that one. I realize it gives you the feeling of duress, but so does the dude in a boat. Dude in a boat. Superior duress art every time. And Dak Faden, greatest thief in the multiverse, did not deserve to get killed after being stranded on a damn roof for three days. Because that's the stupidest thing in the goddamn world. Alright, uh, white. We need white's iconic spell. Now, white's iconic spell needs to give us life. So, we need to have gain life. We need it to be a white card. We need it to be a common card. And we need it to have a CMC of one. Search with these options. We are not doing one with nothing. You know what it did. Uh, Alright, so. There are some good options here. Uh, we can't do Benediction of the Moons. Because it has Haunt. We're not using Haunt in this set. Chaplain's Blessing is tempting. But a pure life gain card isn't great. Cathedral Sanctifier is better. Because she gives us a dude who gives us life. Um, so, I mean, we do have a healing... We have a couple of healing potions. Chaplain's Blessing is one. Um, healing Salve is the classic. We will have Pacifism, but Pacifism is not one, one mana. And we're looking at one mana spells. 
Um, hello, Golden Glow Moth. You look tempting. Um, healing Grace, if you even notice, is strictly better than Healing Salve. Healing Salve was the weakest of the old cards. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, it's April Fool's Day, but I'm not even going to put into the meme because we have new people in chat. Uh, Stormcrow actually might fit. Moment of Triumph. You know what? Moment of Triumph does feel like a winner here. I, I gotta give that to you, Skippy. That one's a pretty good choice. Uh, hmm. But Pride Guardian's also a pretty good choice. Because Pride Guardian fits our Kitty Cat Life Gain theme. But I could do both. Let's do both. So we're gonna do Moment of Triumph. For our first one, I'm gonna turn off the big window. So that you guys can actually see us putting in the stuff. That's the important part here. Alright, so Moment of Triumph. That is a, a one white, not a creature. That is an instant. It's a white combat trick. It's pretty great. Works better if I don't try to write symbols that don't exist in the text box. Moment of Triumph. And if anything, Moment of Triumph, I feel, should replace... Uh, oh, what is the one that replaced Healing Salve? Uh, and it's not Healing Grace, which it should have been, or Chaplain's Blessing, which it should have been. It's like, uh, it's a weaker version of, uh, of Resupply. I do not like what they replaced it with, because it's like, you just made slightly better Healing Salve. But you made it cost more. Because you didn't like it. Of course it wouldn't be in my one mana search. That's a one mana search. <sighs> Come on, brain. I mean, hey, it has an ex- one thing. Uh, what do you mean founder thing? That part I'm not aware of. Did something happen on Twitch that I didn't know about? That, that, that sounds like me. That tracks. Uh, while we're in here, we are also going to add this Pride Guardian dude, because he's pretty sweet. Oh. Let me go to my stream manager and look at this. Ah. Okay, so you're a VIP. I knew about that part. Second bits leader, sure. So you've given the second most bits on the channel. Founder. Hmm, let me look at this. Twitch, founder. What do you do, founder badge? A founder badge is a subscriber badge that is exclusively available to the first 10 prime or paid subscribers of an affiliate. Ah, neat. So... Since you were one of our first 10 subscribers, you got a badge. That's pretty spiffy. Yeah. I mean, it's free. Well, I guess it wasn't free. You paid for it. But still, pretty neat. Okay, and this is a cat monk. So he's a, he's a cat. He's a kitty cat. And he punch... Nope, that's centaur. Punch, punch, punch. And he punch, punch, punch. There we go. And uh, the Pride Guardian never says what plane he's from, but he looks like he's from Theros or Dominaria. But, I mean, he's only been in a corset and conspiracy? So, eh, we don't know. But, you know what? He's been in a corset. This is a corset. It looks pretty neat. Ooh, there was a noise. What is the noise? Oh! Oh! So, hey, Stormy, you are also a sub now. Congratulations. And now our uh, sub gifting champ is Skippy. So thank you, Skippy, for gifting the sub. It's very nice. Yeah, there's only been two printings. So that's neat. So we've got Pride Guardian, who I think fits this set pretty well with our Kitty Cat Life game. 
Um, do, 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 do. All right, so. Uh, let me look through our chat. Skippy's mentioned a lot. Uh, no, chat window. Go back where I put you. Let's see here. Thoughtseize. I have actually never run into Thoughtseize. So let me take a gander here at Thoughtseize. Uh, that's a rare. We're looking at commons right now. Um, that is the stronger version of Duress. Um, the fact that we already have Duress makes me think Thoughtseize might be redundant. Um, but, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Okay, so we definitely have our Ixalan card done. And, oh, why am I looking at playing cards? That's not the right list. List of known planes. That's where I should be. Okay. Um, we are not going to do Alkaba because that's only been in the comics. Uh, Stormy, the gift means you are now a subscriber. Um, Skippy, I'm going to say no as much as I love Alenda. We are not going to make her be the Exelon card. Uh, just because... I don't want to reprint any legendaries. I want all legendaries to be our new creations. Maybe Immortal Sun will consider it. But again, we're looking at commons. You keep yelling out mythics, man. Okay, so Alara, which we're going to need one for each shard. Uh, Amonkhet. Um, what is Azoria? Mm, nope, we're not doing Azoria. Uh, we won't be doing Bablovia because that's in the wrong multiverse. We will be doing Dominaria, which we have Land of War Elf, so they're done. Eldraine. Fiora. Uh, Innistrad. Definitely Innistrad and Ixalan, so we're on 11. Kaladesh. Kamigawa. Kylum. Lorwyn and Shadowmoor. So we're on 15 so far. 16 for Mercadia. 17 for New Phyrexia. 18 for Mirrodin. Uh, 19 for Plain of Mountains and Seas. 20 for Revaya. Uh, 21 for Ravnica. 22 for Regatha. 23 for Segovia. Oh, wait, no. We haven't been to Segovia. We can forget them. So, 23 for Chandelar. 24 for Tarkir. 25 for Theros. 26 for Ulgrotha. 27 for Vryn. And 28 for Zendikar. So, 28 cards have to be in there. Ooh! Stormy, that's much more a rare idea. But it's very doable. That is very doable. Ringgate Network. Now that's an interesting one to think about. Because that is Vryn. That is very much Vryn. Um, let me pull that one up. I believe Ringgate Network was an uncommon, though. Mm -hmm -hmm. Works better if I spell Ringgate right. Uh, hmm. Mage Ring Network, you mean. Uh, hey, you know what? Mage Ring Network is a good uncommon land. But I do think that that's one we're going to want to look at later when we're on the uncommons. But... I'm not against the idea. That's a really good one. Uh, and if anything, hold up, Stormy. That idea you mentioned. Uh, legendary creature. I'm going to put this as a note. Whale kid? Please do. 
please sit, screenshot your ideas and save them for later. Uh, or even, like, sniff them? I'm fine with sniffing them. Yeah, Ringgate Network's an uncommon, but it's been reprinted a couple of times from the look of it. So, oh no, it's only been printed twice. But one of them was a core set, so that makes sense. Uh, okay, but yeah, we're looking at commons. So you know what, first thing, let's look at all the common cats. We have this kitty cat life gain idea going on. Let's look at every common cat. Because I like the idea of cats, personally. Uh, in white or black. Have to be white or black. And have to be common. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. Oh, you know what I did? I put in my search wrong. I told it. I wanted white black cats, and we don't have a white black cat. But this tells us what one of our first custom cards is going to be. It's going to be... Where's our white black one? It's going to have to be a creature. It's going to have to be a cat. Hmm. Possessed gun that shoots out ghost cats. A little too out there, even for me. But I am not against the idea of ghost cats. Uh, so, let's look here. So, our first... Uh, I think there's only one black cat. What the hell, Magic? Oh, there's two black cats. We have two black cats. Uh, we have three black cats. But two of them don't work here. Nope, looks like there's four black cats. But three of them don't work here. But two of them do. Wind Grace Acolyte and Black Cat. Just name Black Cat. We're going to leave fairies to blue. Uh, well, we're going to put in two black cats. So, And they're both in common, which helps us a lot. Yeah, my nose is itchy. I don't like it. Uh, so one's going to be a four and a black. There we go. So this is going to be common black creature four. Uh, common black four. That's Wind Grace Acolyte. Now, what is Wind Grace Acolyte? Well, I'll show you. Wind Grace Acolyte. There we go. Nope. Yeah. It's this guy. He's a panther warrior from Dominaria who rides on the back of a giant pterodactyl monster. Because that's really cool. And why shouldn't we have something really cool in this? So a 3-2 with flying is not the worst thing in the world to have. Um, even if he is... Uh, he is going to self-mill, but that kind of synergizes with Black Green's fill-up-your-bin strategy. And he gets you life, which synergizes with Black White's uh, strategy. So, I mean, all that together makes him a real fun dude to have on your side. Uh, I'm personally fond of having this kitty. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is our flavor text is running off the bottom there. We don't want that. Um, so we are going to turn on specific options. We're going to chop the bottom and top of this card a little bit. Boop, boop. Boop. Hmm. Maybe we don't chop the top. Or maybe we chop this to 12. That's better. All right. So we have our Wind Grace Acolyte. He's pretty fun. Uh, we're going to pull up our second one, which is Black Cat. So to pull up Black Cat in your other window, there you go. He's a zombie kitty. Uh, and actually, there's a wonderful bit of fiction by Orcish Librarian about this Black Cat. And this is an Innistrad card. Um, yeah, he was in Dark Ascension. And Mystery Boosters. Neat. Uh, I'm very fond of this stupid cat. Uh, it is a very fun cat to have, especially if you're in a mill strategy or a blue-black control strategy. So we're going to pop him into our common black creatures as well. 
because nothing is better at being a common black creature than the black cat. There we go. And he is a zombie kitty cat. Because the cat came back. Um, we could theoretically throw this kitty in the oven. Hey, wait a minute. Is... Alright, hold up. We're going to go down a list here real quick. Alright, so we have black cat. That's one. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Faceful cat, you might fit here, but we'll come back to you. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Paper tiger, you're fun, but nope. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Mm hmm. Undead Leotau, we can't use right now. Twilight Panther is fun. Um, and he does kind of also signify what you'll be doing with cats. So we might put Twilight Panther in here as well in white. Uh, Wing Grace Acolyte. Yeah, you know who I'm not seeing? Is which is familiar? That's his name, right? Oh no, which is familiar is the frog. So then who's the stupid cat? Oh, is it Cauldron Familiar? No, computer. I did not want fortifications. I wanted cats. Cauldron Familiar. He's an uncommon. Which is why he's not showing up right now. Uh, same with Dread Malkin. Yeah, there are more black cats, but they're all an uncommon and rare. We're trying to fill in commons right now. So that's fine. Ooh. Barrage of Urborg is neat. What are you? You're rare, I'm assuming. Yeah. But you're also on the reserve list, so I can't use you. Weird cat with titties. Um, let's, let's take a step back to Black Cat. Nope. There you are. Alright, Black Cat. Zombie Cat, 1-1. One, one. Great. Uh, I'm not currently looking at chat. Give me a second. I will be able to pull your guys' window back up. But sadly, I do not have uh, the ability to do two monitors. It is the one downside of my desktop. There we go. Uh, ooh, a cat riding a shield like in Breath of the Wild. That's kind of nice. Uh, okay, gotta go back to the bottom here. Do, 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 do. Uh, what about a little black kitten that saves monsters? It could be a lucky cat. Maybe. Throw him in the oven. Must pet. Put cat in oven. What if we made Scar Simba from Lion King? It's a black cat. Okay, now hold up. Stormy, you gave me an idea there. Um, there is a mechanic. There are two mechanics from Almond Cat that I believe should be deciduous, if not evergreen. Uh, and that one of those mechanics is called Exert. So I think this guy here, Devoted Crop Mate, we could turn into a uh, alternative for uh, a, a cat character using basically the same ability. Now, Glorybringer's very tempting if we're going to put Exert in a set. I'm not denying that. Oh boy, am I not denying that. Uh, okay, so where... So this guy is an uncommon, though, and we're going to keep him at uncommon. Because uh, we're making a functional reprint here. We don't need to rock the boat too much. Uh, here we go. So we're going to call this Lucky Cat for now. Uh, creature, cat, uh, you may exert lucky cat as it attacks. If you do, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. An exert permit won't untap during your next untap step. Yeah, that works perfect. Uh, we will figure out what to do with that later. But I do like that idea, and we're going to put him in the uncommons. Lucky cat right here. Uh, he's going to be great. Okay, now, down here, we have another kitty cat we need to put in. 
And that kitty cat is... Where did you go? Oh. Now, we already have a cat in our one white spot who gets us life. So, Train Caracal, you're out. Twilight Panther, you're very tempting. But as we are currently standing, we have two black cats, two white cats. And I think we could do a little bit better in our commons. I think one more cat on each side is the way to go. Step links, you're great, you're memeable, but you also have landfall, which is not a mechanic I'm upgrading. Um... Twilight Panther, Panther is a black-white cat. That is not... I'm not denying that. Uh, color identity-wise, he is. Even though you could play him in purely a white deck. But... I'm playing with the idea right now. Um, Skyhunter Skirmisher, though. Skyhunter Skirmisher, you're fun. You're a lot of fun. We might come back to you, but so is Skyhunter Prowler. Ooh. What is better here between these three Sky Hunters? Now, the Sky Hunters are cats from Mirrodin. Um, there's technically four Sky Hunters, but I'm ignoring you, Sky Hunter Cub. Do we want a 2 3 flying first strike for four, a 1 3 flying vigilance for three, or a 1 1 flying double strike for three? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Now, using Silvercoat Lion as our bear could be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm hearing a vote for Patrol. I think you're right. I think Patrol is the way to go. So we're going to change this three white to a two white white. Make it Sky Hunter Patrol. And it's going to be a Cat Knight. And this lets us have a, black, uh, a white knight. That fits in our black-white strategy, which is what I wanted originally. Yeah. Cat. Knight. There we go. And it is a 2-3 flying first strike, which is not a bad combo to have. Um, we're not going to use that flavor text, though. We're going to make a new flavor text because Mirrodin was taken over. By the Eldra- uh, not by the Eldrazi, by the Phyrexians! Uh, ooh. Ooh, okay. Well, when I say a bear, I mean a 2-2 two -two for 2. Not necessarily a bear bear. Uh, ooh, Savannah Sage isn't bad, and he was just in a corset. Um, so he's not too bad shabby either. Um, hmm. Oresco Swiftclaw, he's fun. Oresco Sun Guide. Eh, he's inspired. Uh, Lost Lannan, you have Infect. We are not using Infect cards right now. I'm sorry. I have often considered what a dual deck Phyrexians versus Eldrazi would look like. I wish it happened. It didn't happen, but I wish it happened. Hmm... Oh, well, hello, Kemba Skyguard. You're also fun. But maybe not. Jaded's Dragoons is way too expensive uh, for what we're looking at right now. Hero of the Pride. Maybe. Hmm. Ah, Felidar Cub. And then we have a Zendikar card. So, Felidar Cub here, I think, is the way to go. You see him right up there in the blue. Uh, Felidar Cub's a lot of fun. He is a cat beast. He's a 2-2 cat beast for two that we can kill to get rid of an enchantment. That's a lot of fun. Uh... Okay, not yet. Cat. It's a cat. 
Diese finde ich nämlich. Ja, East. There we go. Okay. Felidar Guardian, I was considering in a rare slot. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and, like, for us having cats that care about life gain, Felidar Guardian makes a lot of sense. Uh, now for a new problem. We have... Oh, we have three and three. We have three and three. We're good. We're good. My concern is... We have one that gains a slight... Oh, no, we don't have three and three. We have four and two. So, let's go down to Black Commons. There you are, Black Commons. Okay, let's sort this by our rarity again. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna need some cats. We need some nice big kitties. Uh, because... I... Mm, Red's yelling things that I'm fairly certain are obscene, but I can't quite hear them. We have a four and a two. Or a five and a two. Let's get a three mana. I think three mana is the way to go. Kitty cat. There we go. And maybe a four mana. There we go. Right, so we have some cats. We don't know what they're going to be yet. We're going to have to make new cats. Oh, wait. I guess I put one of those in the wrong place, didn't I? Yeah. Sorry. I was asking if they were bar cats. No. <laughs> you keep your bar cats out of here. Well, bar kitties is just like two letters off from bar kitties. This is a family friendly channel. No, it's not. Uh, there we go. Now we have an uncommon black cat. That'll work. Big fluffy paws. I, I agree we need big fluffy paws. Stormy says go rats. All right. Stor Stormy says go rest. Okay. So now, let's... Oh, you know what? Maybe a colorless cat isn't a bad idea. Uh, we can't do Paper Tiger, but we could do Prophet of the Peak or Stonework Puma. And I personally think Prophet of the Peak might be the way to go here. Look at this big asshole. I love him. So let's go up here to artifact creature five man or six mana. Jesus. Big fake kitty. Why does it have antlers? Why don't you have antlers? Pro probably because you're a human, and not not you know a, a weird cat statue. Prophet of the Peak, and it is a six drop for a five five with when eh enters the battlefield. Scry two. Doesn't help the um It doesn't help the archetype, but it helps you round out your deck, which is always nice. And I love its flavor text stuff. It frequently predicts imminent death by devouring. Yes, Prophet of the Peak is a pretty big critter, uh, critter there. Considering, if we zoom in on his art... I don't think that's natural storm formation. I think that's part of a roof. He baked. Also, he's a 5-5. Five five. Uh, what decks are we currently playing in the house? Um, we're not, which has been a problem. Mikel has been working on a mermaid deck. Um, most of the ways we've been playing uh, have been shut down. Um, so what I have been doing is I've been playing the Kassmeyer playtest with uh, Beacon of Creation. Go follow them on Twitter. They're great. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been I've been doing that, and I've been messing around in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, okay, so I think we're good on cats for a minute. I do think we need to make sure that we have a good, simple black zombie. 
Uh, and a simple blue mermaid. Yeah, I think a simple blue mermaid is what we should look for. So let, let's try to get our iconic uh, creatures taken care of. So let me pull up the checklist again real quick-like. Uh, eh. Eh. Uh, also, if you're following them on Twitter, also follow uh, Create Castmire, which is where you can vote on what cards get put into their custom set. It's fantastic. So we need an angel, we need soldiers, we need knights, we need humans for white. We need serpents, sphinxes, merfolks, vidalkins. Uh, we're going to have more than one zombie, but we need to make sure we have at least one zombie. Uh, but let's start with white and work our way around the wheel. I will tell you right now that my default when it comes to a corset is that there are two, or there's two cards that if they're not in a corset, I don't feel it's poor enough. Um, and one of those is over in white in the uncommon slot. Uh, so she used to be a rare, but now she's an uncommon. And that's Sarah Angel. Uh, if we don't have a Sarah Angel, it doesn't feel right. Uh, now, she is not a four and a white. She is a three white white. Okay, Stormy, this is a core set. We don't want to start mixing our core types yet. When we make our three follow-up sets, Zombie Angel could fit very well in one of those. Ooh, I love the idea. Uh, we've, we've had a vampire dragon. Why not a zombie angel? Um, but for what we're doing right now, I feel that might not be our best bet. So uh, Sarah Angel is this gal here. Um, the idea is that the angel Sarah created them. Uh, and they show up on multiple planes. They are mostly known on Dominaria, but they also have been known to show up on Algrotha. So we can't quite count her as one of our plain specific cards. But there's been so many arts of her. I love the Japanese Dominaria art. I love both Dominaria arts, honestly. Uh, the one here, which was from Welcome... Oh god, how far back does that art go? It's from one of the core sets. Um, that one's fantastic. This is the original art here. Uh, I do like the 8th edition art as well, even though the pointy titties will put an eye out. Um, this is a misprint. This is very much a misprint. Holy, oh my goodness, that is a misprint. Um, I do love Sarah Angel, and I think Sarah Angel needs to be in a set for a set to feel true. Oh my goodness, that, that Rebecca Gway art. Mm, lovely. Uh, I, f I don't even know which art to pick. I do like... Scott's art here. Ah, oh, they're so good. So many good arts for Sarah Angel. Uh, deadly, uh, pretty art and deadly tits both work really well for summing up Sarah Angel. 4-4 uh, four, four, Flying Vigilance. If you want to know what card sums up white better than anything other than a life gain spell, it's these. It is Sarah Angel. Uh, and one of my favorite legendaries is a Sarah Angel who came out slightly wrong. Uh, and that is uh, Tiana, the ship's engineer. I love her so much. Okay, I do think this Sarah Angel art is the one to go with. And in fact, as much as I would love to use that art, uh, we're going to do it for now. She'll, she'll be a placeholder art for now. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're going to do the art crop. Haha. -ha. Save our art. We're going to put it in Pictores. We're going to put it in uh, Quarantine 2020. That's what we're naming this set. This is our quarantine set. There we are. Fantastic. Now, I don't suggest doing this unless you're doing a remake set, of course, but uh, we're doing a core set, and I think having Rebecca Gway's art is a great way to do it. I realize that the sub-windows don't quite pop up for you guys, but ah, look at that. Look at the art that that is. Mm. The thing is, that I don't think there's been a single bad art of Sarah Angel. Uh, she's a perfect card. It's a perfect card. There's n and the other one that I think every corset needs is a rare 
for red. Um, it is my favorite rare in red. And he's not the best creature in the world. Uh-oh, did the wrong button there. <laughs> the blue version does need some work, I won't deny that. Uh, but my favorite red card, or red creature, that I think needs to be in every core set, uh, should be loading here in a second, that's Sheban Dragon. Not you be a Sheban Dragon, get out of here. Sheban Dragon. Uh, who has the other issue of, one, it's a badass dragon. How can you say no to this guy? I love everything about him. Uh, but we are going to copy in his stuff here real quick. Over into our card. Boop. Great. Boop. Boop. And he is a 5-5. Five, five. And most importantly, you'll notice, is that he is a dragon. That's a very important part of a shipping dragon. Uh, also, I have his mana cost wrong here in the window. He is not a 5 and a red. He is a 4 and a red red. Because uh, one deal with magic is all cards with the same name are identical. If the rules have been updated, then the new one will update the rules text. Look at all these dragons. Thing is, there's only been a couple ship and dragon arts. I do like this one. Hoo boy. Uh, the original is not bad. The original has that certain vibe to it. Uh, the yellow art that came out, oh my goodness, back in 7th, uh, isn't bad. I do like that red dragon. Um, I'm also not too, I, I, I'm not, I'm not against this one. I do want to avoid classic yellow here. I think he's a little overdone. So, let's see here. So we have red shivan dragon, or we have... Uh, Mitgo Ship and Dragon. This one's actually a little bit low, uh, low poly. Oh, you know what though? There is another Ship and Dragon art that I know of. Um, I might switch to that one later. When I do, I will put in the new art uh, credit. Dragon Chassis. What? Are you thinking Dragon Engine? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying without it being a golden dragon, it's not a Shibin dragon. Um, I can see that. I can see that argument. All right. We'll do Donato Giancola's art. Boop. All righty. And we're going to do an art crop. It's a little blurry because it's Mitgo. But we'll make it work. Yeah, I guess the red one does kind of look like a mirrored and goblin. Alright. So hey, we got a couple of dragons in. Or we got a couple of important cards in. Corset needs Sarah Angel. Corset needs Ship and Dragon. A big vampiric spider. Like, like Stormy, I'm loving the off-the-wall ideas here. My concern is, is that corsets, we tend to dial it back a little bit. Um, but I don't want to say no to a giant vampiric spider. That does sound cool. Uh, now, Gamble being the quintessential red card, I'm not sure about. So let me read Gamble here. So Gamble. Search your library for a card. Put that card in your hand. Discard a card at random. Shuffle your library. Uh, tempting. Very tempting. 
I'm going to pass for now. Oh, you know who is an iconic card, though? Is Giant Spider. Giant Spider's been in every single... Uh, not every single set, but every core set except for core set 2020, the newest one. We were about to enter our first year without Giant Spider being legal. Or I think we're in it now, which is wrong. It feels wrong. Because Giant Spider's been there since Alpha, man. Uh, it feels wrong to not have Giant Spider on our side. So let's throw in ourselves a G El Spidro Gigante. That's not his name. Let's try that again. Giant Spider. Uh, so Giant Spider has always been the same. He's a 2-4 spider for 4 mana with reach. Now, even before reach was a word, he had the ability that would become reach. Uh, and also, one of the best Giant Spider arts is from uh, the plain of mountains and forests, or mountains and seas. So, I think that's the version of Giant Spider I would like to use, personally. Because to me, it is not magic if there is no Giant Spider. Will I use Giant Spider? Maybe. But uh, Giant Spider's been there as long as Shiv and Dragon, and as long as Sarah Angel. And he actually has had more staying power than Shiv and Dragon or Sarah Angel. So Giant Spider is an OG. He deserves to be here as much as the rest of them. Uh, so there we go. Uh, another one that is one of those... Oh, let, we, let's, let's go back to our list. Let's go back to our list. So we have an elf. We have a knight. We're good there. Um... We have an angel. Very important angels. We need a soldier and we need a human. And then we will have all of our white creature types filled in. So we're going to look for human. We're going to look for soldier. We're going to allow for partial type matches. We want it in white. We want a white human or a white soldier. Maybe both. We want one that can work well in any set so no fancy mechanics and i realize that searching for humans is dumb because there's 940 some odd humans and soldiers in some combination uh you know what i also realized i didn't do is i didn't put that i wanted them in common i think we need want them in common and i think we also need an angel in common which we didn't put in yet so let's see here we need just a pure human or a pure soldier or a pure human soldier uh, that fits with what white does in the modern day. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I will be honest. There is an old, old card. Um, I have a slight disagreement with Wizards of the Coast when it comes to the presence of guns in Magic. I love the Aliborn set, the Aliborn cards. Uh, they're also Dominarian. A lot of the cards are from Dominaria, because the first, what, 15 years all took place on Dominaria, except for a few sets here and there. Um, but Aliborn Grenadier is a 2-2 with Vigilance for white-white. That's good. We could do it for a one and a white, but I think that's an option. Uh, now, there's also Empyrean Tactician here, who buffs all of our creatures, which does work really well with that aggro strategy that Red White wants. Um, hmm. Arshin Cleric, I would normally go for, but I want to keep our life gain to kitties or to spells. Or non creature spells. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, Attended Knight is actually kind of fun here because they make a soldier token so that's an option you know what 
I think we can... Huh. We've got so many good options here. You know what we need is we need our 3-2 vanillas. We need 3-2 vanillas across the board. That's what we're going to use. And that's going to take care of our soldier because we're going to use Bastion Enforcer here. What does he enforce? He enforces Bastions. Actually, I think that's a she. I don't know. I can't tell with dwarves. Uh, portal, portal 2, whatever. Same, same diff to me. Uh, but yeah, we want our two and a white. And Bastion Enforcer fits this very, very well. Because he is a dwarf soldier. Uh, I'm not going to say no to a dwarf soldier. I think having a dwarf in a set helps open up people's minds to what cards we can have. And he's a vanilla. Now, he's, an, uh, he's a vanilla from Kaladesh. So I think having a vanilla there doesn't quite fit Kaladesh's flavor. But having that vanilla one helps a lot. Hey, white, white believes in morality. It doesn't mean that it is moral. That's very important to remember. Uh, but with this, we're going to go back to our advanced search. We are going to look for blue creatures at common that are vanilla CMC 3 power 3 toughness 2 and the whole thing it, it, every, every we're just going to make a cycle of vanillas out of existing cards here now this one makes it a little bit easier we have two guys we have two options one's a merfolk the Merfolk makes it easier for me. So I don't want to go with an Eternal. I, they're neat, but I don't want to use them. Let's use that Coral Commando. He's a Merfolk Warrior. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I like the name Coral Commando. It seems like that would be... The toys that Ravnican kids ask for on whatever their not Christmas is. Mom, Dad, can you get me a Coral Commando for not Christmas? Sure, son. Let's get you a Coral Commando. All right. Uh, now we have a couple more options here. Um, so this brings up a good question here: of Would we rather go zombie or vampire? <coughs> hmm. So we have Barony Vampire, we have Vampire Noble, and we have Warpath Ghoul. Uh, I'm personally fond of Vampire Noble, who is a Vampire Noble. Uh, I'm, I'm very much fond of Vampire Noble being a Vampire Noble, because it's the Lizard Man joke. State your name, race, and occupation. Uh, lizard Man, Lizard Man, and Lizard Man. And Vampire Noble, one, she makes that dress look good. Two, is that she's like just, she's an Innistrati vampire. And now, where I just said the dwarf soldier did not feel Kaladeshi enough to be Kaladeshi, to be our Kaladesh card, Vampire Noble, I think, can be our Innistrad card. That's true. Uh, I mean, having the zombie one is identical, because we're just doing vanillas. And we do need a zombie later, at least one. But now we have our at least one vampire, and it's a noble. So that's nice. Very noble vampire there. Uh, so now we need to do our red one. So now we're going to go back to here. We scroll to the top. We're going to make that an R, and I hope we can find one. Oh, we easily can. Uh, there's a couple. Hmm. So do we want a goblin or a barbarian? Uh, hmm. I, I like the Halberdier. 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 
Um, Goblin Rough Rider just sounds so much cooler, though. As does Goblin Cavalier. I love them riding their little goats. Look at them riding the little goats. Look at them goats. Oh, he's just a goblin. Herbider. Um, God, I do love those little goats. Rough Rider's neat, though. Because he's riding like a weird centipede monster on what is clearly Zendikar. Even though he's not quite a Zendikar. Curly, uh, Zendikari Goblin. Oh, I guess he is. He's been knighted. So we, he is a knight. Whereas Goblin Cavalier is not a knight. Which feels wrong. Because he's a cavalier. Hmm. So this is the Skrill Tamer. This is the Goat Dude. Uh, I think I think we want... I guess you're right. As much as I love the little goats, I think Goblin Rough Rider is the way to go. Alright. So Because he's a Goblin Knight. And that opens up some more avenues for us. Uh, Goblin. We already have a knight. Which is always fun. Uh, put that in. Boop. Great. Okay, so finally green. Uh, we, we want our little cycle here to be completed out with green. We have one option. It's Gorilla Warrior. Now, that's the thing that makes me wonder, though. If I put a four here, does that open us up? It does. Okay. That's Gorilla Warrior, not Gorilla Titan. Um. Now the thing is, though, and this makes me wonder, is it better to put a three three here for green and a four two in for red? Centaur Courser is kind of where you want to gauge yourself. Um, hmm. But just to be different, even though everyone uses Centaur Courser, I prefer Harrier Naga. So, you know what? We're going to mix it up for green. And then we're going to go back to that Goblin Knight, and we might change him too. So, if we switched out that there Goblin Knight, where'd he go? There you are. For a red one with power four and toughness two. No, toughness two. There we go. We will put in a gorilla. Hold up. Uh, if we could do Onaki Ogre, we could do Frenzied Raptor. And while Ogres are more traditional, Traditionally red. Ogre sup. Let's go with a dinosaur. I said it. The the only ogre who matters is Shrek. And if you think, ah, oh, well, Shrek's pretty great, then you're right. He is. Okay, you know what, Skippy? You're right. Ogre Errant's pretty great too. I think, is his name Knight Errant or Ogre Errant? I guess Fiona's alright. Let's see here. Ogre Errant. Yeah, there he is. Which everyone's just a, just agreed is named Shrek. Uh, alright. So that took care of a couple of our creature types. 
Oh, right. We need that common angel, don't we? We need a human. We, we didn't put in a human. At all. Wait, did we? No, we put in a dwarf. Crap. Um, all right. So, let's see here. Mm. We're not putting you in Vanalish Infantry. Mm. Okay. So, we're going to get rid of the Ore Soldier part here. It just needs to be a human, so that should knock out some cards. 371. Great. <laughs> hmm. You're not putting in Segovian Angel. She is too strong, despite being so tiny. Um. Actually, is she really that strong? She's a little stronger than Healer's Hawk, I'd say. She might be fine. I still don't wanna. We are not using anyone voting. Because that'd be insane. We don't want anyone with life gain because they're not cats. We want life gain to be tied with cats. Cloud Crusader looks fun, but I think he's essentially one of the cats we already have. Let's see what slots we have open for white. Um, six drop in whites open. So is a hate bear. Let's look for a hate bear. That's not a bad hate bear. Um, hmm. See you. See you later, Stormy. Have a great day, or a great evening, I suppose. It is late. Hmm. Hmm. Desperate Century would be fun if not for that delirium. Uh, the Trapper? Uh, it references historic spells, so I'm going to say no on that one. Ooh. Ooh. No, wait. Lifelink. I just said I don't want life gain unless it's on a cat. Mm. Oh. Hey, Doom Traveler. We don't have Sacrifice in white, though. We could. But we don't. That's a maybe. You're a maybe, Doom Traveler. Uh, Elder Kathar. Elder Kathar indicates that there's a Humans Matter theme, and there's not. We're just picking our one human we need for the set. Uh, Elite Arrestor. Ooh! Blue White is Control. If we put him in, we have to go back and put in that panther. I'm not against it, though. Because that's not a bad way to expose people. Ooh. Elite Vanguard's good. You know what? We don't have a white one drop that does damage. I think Elite Vanguard wins. Uh, there he is. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Right, I'm going to put him in a maybe window. I want to see who we have on the next page. Mm. Mm. Fencing ace is often, uh, is awfully tempting too. Ooh, so is Firehoof Cavalry. So he fits very well into that aggro strategy. Uh, we are putting Exert and Cycling in here, but Gideon's Lawkeeper. Gideon's Lawkeeper is essentially that multicolored dude we were just looking at. But in pure white, which is nice. We did just say Exert's going to be in here, so here's who we have. 
I think all three of these guys work. Between Elite Vanguard and Gideon's Lawkeeper, what's better? So 1-1 one, one for 1, that for a white and a tap, you can tap something. Or a 2-1 one for 1 with no abilities. Because uh, Gustwalker's going to be in for the uh, aggro strategy. Hmm. I can see the advantage on either one. I personally prefer Gideon's Lawkeeper. Uh, though I also recognize that Gideon's Lawkeeper might be a little weird to put in. Considering Gideon's dead. Um, uh, I'm still picking what if we're going to put in a one drop one. Uh, if we do, I'm currently picking between Elite Vanguard and Gideon's Lawkeeper. I could have sworn there's another version of Gideon's Lawkeeper who doesn't need white or blue mana. He just needs white. Or he just needs generic. Ooh, Inspiring Captain's a lot of fun. Alright, Elite Vanguard it is. Nice little human soldier he is. Two, one. Human. Soldier. Now, the nice part about what we're doing right now is that you could take all this and just turn it into a cube so far. Uh, so, Gideon's Lawkeeper, you're kind of out. We're going to go to MTG Assist. Wonderful little website. Definitely suggest using it at all times. And what we're going to do is we're going to go look for uh, Gideon's Lawkeeper, and it's going to tell you cards that look very similar. Gold Meadow Harrier, that's who I was thinking of. Or Banal's Trapper is actually uh, also very similar. There's also Loxodon Mystic, who could be a lot of fun in that place. A Crow and Mastiff, Blinding Mage. Ostiary Thrall, ugh, maybe not, but it'd be neat. Rune Law Enforcer, Fanbearer, Dromoka Dunecaster. So many good options. But, ooh, I do like the tap down. I like a tap downer. Um, and I think, if I'm gonna pick one, mm, I don't know. There's so many good ones. Hmm. Oh, well. We don't need to worry about that. Oh, I guess Gold Har Meadow Harrier is the good one to use. Because uh, it'd be nice to have a Lorewind card. I think it would be nice to have a Lorewind card. So we're actually going to put in another one drop for white there. And why not a Kithkin? And that takes care of our We Need a Lorewind card. It's a good card. I, I'm not denying that. Uh, now, truth be told, I am like in this weird limbo uh, where I'm like flipping between exhausted and not exhausted. And I'm not a fan. But I'll be fine. Eventually, I'll be fine. Uh, but ugh, I, I do feel like a car hit me half the time. Uh, Gustwalker, he also needs to end up in here. So, Gustwalker. Because you fit. Uh, so, Harrier is in here for the control strategy, Gustwalker is in here for the aggro strategy. Also, he's our first wizard in the set. Neat. Lizardo. There we go. And he's he's uh, he's a hate bear. That's what he is. He's a great hate bear. 
especially if we're introducing exert as our new evergreen, which is one of my uh, intentions. Why are you panicking, man? You don't want to panic. Panicking sucks. Whatever you do, don't panic. All right. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go up here. We're going to put in type angel. Common angels. Only 12. That makes this way easier to find a good one. I am very fond of Angel of Mercy. Although, a Dawning Angel is almost better. So, Govian Angel is not bad, but we already have three one drops in white now. I think one, two. Do we have two, three? We have three. Seraph of Dawn, eh? Flying and Lifelink. Well, she is not a cat. I can appreciate her being here. Winged Shepherd, actually, since I want to bring in Cycling, uh, I think is the way to go. I think Winged Shepherd is the way to go, because he is very much the weaker Sarah Angel, but he's a good backup in a draft. So might as well. And also he's a dude angel, which is not very common in magic. Uh, mm, you know, I'm going to shrink this one. I'm going to move this window over. That's just been obscuring everything. There we go. That's much better. Uh, so, flying. Now, there's going to be some spots we just cannot fill, and that's where we're going to make new cards. That's the neat part of this. And we are going to change this flavor text later, but not right now. He is a trace trace. He is an angel. I think that covers all of our archetypical white creatures. And we still have one, two, three, four, five creatures, two or Oh, I said we have two ores. I'm a liar. Because we need a pacifism. We definitely need a pacifism. The nice part about a corset is we know it's going to be cards people are used to. That's how corsets are. They are the bread before the meal. Now, the big question is, which print do we use for its flavor text? But I do like the Cantafella get a moment's peace around here. Uh, I know Grack is the classic. I don't want to use Grack. Um... I do like the Karn one. I do like the Acroma one. The Drain one is pretty good. I'm not going to deny that. Oh, I am given ice cream. Ooh, this is wonderful. I have a question. Can I get some magic shell? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can go do it off the camera. That works great. Thank you, though. Mmm. Magic shell on chocolate malted crunch. Uh, I do like Karn, but I think you're right. Pacifism has the best one because it's got the giant, like, knitting, which is just adorable. I think that is the way to go. There we are. We have a pacifism. You need to have your pacifism effect. Um, okay. Yeah, so right now we're just in checklist mode. That, that's still important. Okay, we got our soldier. Uh, all right, so I think we're good on white. We have an angel, we have a soldier, we have a knight, we have a human. Uh, blue, we have a merfolk, so we're one down. We need a serpent, a Vidalcan, and a sphinx. So let's get uh, a serpent first. Now, we need a serpent, but serpents have a tendency to just not be as cool as they could be. Ooh, thank you. So, whoa, don't, don't die. Don't trip over things. Please don't die. Um, hmm. We need these big old fishy snacks. Now, Gear Seeker Serpent's one of my favorites. Um, but we don't really have an artifact theme. But we do have a lot of artifacts in the set. 
Uh, we are not going to do Harbor Serpent because I am not bringing the walks or the homes back into this. Uh, like, Scrap Diver Serpent's fun. Gear Seeker Serpent's fun. Frilled Sea Serpent is fun. Uh, I want I want a serpent where you get an advantage, not one where you're punished. That that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, Steel clad serpent it has a penalty, but he's an artifact creature, which is really neat. <gasps> Striped river winder. We're bringing in cycling. Let's use the cycling one. Why not? Uh, so let's go down to our blues here. We're actually gonna. Actually, that brings up a question: Striped river winder or The gear seat. No, no, no. Striped River Winder. It's probably the way to go. Alright, so we're going to bump him up. He has a six and a blue. Woof. Nobody wants to pay that much. But I guess you will. He is a serpent. He is a 5 5 serpent. With hexproof and cycling. And I will admit, I do love a lot of the Hour Devastation cards. I felt they were just ever so slightly better than uh, a lot of the sets around it. Uh, let's add our Hexproof Reminder text. Let's eat a little delicious chocolate ice cream here with uh, chocolate milk crunch balls. Mm-mm-mm. Mmm. -mm -mm. Mm. Now that brings up an interesting idea, though. Um, that we should have a cycling card in each color. I think that's a good idea. All right, so that's our Serpent. Let's get ourselves a Vidalcan. Uh, the Vidalcan, for those of you who don't know, um, are these blue dudes. They're, like, kind of froggy. Um, and on planes where they don't have Merfolk, you're typically going to find a Vidalcan in their place as Blue's main race. Mm. The problem is... Ooh. We have Blue Mill. Crosstown Courier fits that immediately well. Or, is it Blue Green Mill? Ooh, Blue Green Mill would be neat. Oh, Blue Black Mill. It works better if I spell Courier, right? There we go. And he's just a Vidalcan. He's nothing special. I'm, I'm certain he, he thinks he's special. Croson Tusker. I will look into him after I put in what Vidalcan Courier does. And also, he counts as a Ravnica card, which makes me feel happy. Okay. Uh, let's look in that Croson Tusker. cycling you know what he's a little bit stronger than I wanted because uh, I kind of want ones that they don't have an ability when they cycle for the comments so he does fit all of our other prerequisites Mana costs greater than or equal to five with cycling common search. Okay, well, I'm going to double check Cross on Tusker. Let's see here. Chart. Mm. Ooh, now Desert Ceridon would be fun. Elvish Aberration would be fun, but we don't want land cycling. That's a little bit too specific. Mm. Although, having a cycle of creatures that do things when you uh, 
cycle would be fun. Like, greater sandworm is more what I'm thinking here. Or granitic titan. That's not to say, though, that I don't like uh, Croson Tusker. Ooh, Rampaging Hippo. He's fun, too. Hmm. So many good options here. Hmm. Where I got you, Winged Shepherd? Wind Collar Avon. You would be who I'd pick, but we already put in the the this guy, <laughs> this the serpent. Mm hmm. Well, what this tells me actually is that what I want for green doesn't exist. Not not the way I'm looking at it. So, we will make our big creature with Trample, with the right Cycler on it, because we should have one that cycles just for green, and one that cycles just for red, which we have Desert Ceridon for that. He's five and a red. And he kind of fits into our Stompy strategy. So he's a beast. He's a 6-4. Which ain't bad. I can't help but feel that Gilded Ceradon was a thing. But I guess he was an uncommon? Might have been an uncommon. And then we don't have a good... Well, we have a decent Black Cycler, I guess. Um, in Horror of the Broken Lands. But it's not quite what I want either. If anything, uh, Desert Ceridon is weaker than I want. So if I just give Trample to that other dude, I want this one to have Haste. So, like, eh. Make him a four and a red red. For a... Five, five? I guess that feels right. Cycling. And let's do this guy. We want one with Menace. That's not right. Um, five, five with Menace for six. That's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, yeah, let's make that that way. Um, and then, like, cycling black. And we'll, we'll run with these later. But I think they'd be fun to do. Uh, this one I would probably make a horror, just because that's my instinct. With those. And then this one would probably be a beast of some kind. And then I kind of like this one being an elemental. Just because I like elementals. And then that also makes me think that we need a big smashy artifact creature for like seven. No, artifact creature. Stay there. All right. Um, like a six, six for seven with trample and cycling two. Um, and this would be a golem. I guess. I think a golem's a good point there. We'll call him, like, Rust Over Golem. Which I think is a good name. Um, I would rather not use a living weapon card. Um, we've had a lot of living weapons already. Like, the living weapons themselves aren't bad. Um, I don't know if I want to put one in at common. They did just have, like, a cycle of colored living weapons, essentially, uh, in 2020. Oh, 
I'll always go with it. Um, but now, like, let's look at Chris on Tusker. He's five and a green green. Okay. You know what? You know what? So we have our cool cycling beast here. But let's also do, since we have Stompy anyway as a strategy, let's also do Croson Tusker. Our big old boar beast. And let's find if there's any that have cycling two in their color that do a thing when they cycle. And so one, we get to do pig, Big Pig, which I like Big Pig, honestly. He is a neat card. He is a neat-ass card. I already had a tab open. Why did I do that? Boop. So his deal is something that lets you cycle for like three mana, and he does a thing. Okay, so I like him. And also, yeah, he's from older sets. He's been in older things. Like, where did he first show up? Oh, he first showed up like... Oh, he's from Onslaught. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So let's look at who else we have. So we don't want basic land... We don't want land cycling. Screw land cycling. Nobody wants that right now. Uh, and I don't want the tribal-themed ones from, like, Invasion. Hmm. Quigfoot Cyclops, you are tempting. Let's see here. Okay, so what I want is I want to cycle of Croson Tuskers, essentially. Um, bigger, beefier creatures that do something neat when they cycle. Because I think cycling on uh, expensive creatures makes a lot of sense. Personal opinion there. I think that just makes a lot of sense. So if we went to like here... Had like a big fish. I think a big fish would be fun. I think I want a 4-4 four, four when I can call them big cycle fish for now. Enters the battlefield. Target player puts the top eh, five cards of their library into their gra graveyard. And then he has cycling two and a blue. When big cycle fish is cycled. Target player puts eh. So copy that. Two. There we go. I think that works very well. Not the most impressive card in the world, but it helps with the mill strategy and it gives them a nice blocker. Yep, we'll make it a fish beast.
Enemy battle lands. How do you mean? This one like a zombie. Um, like Prairie Stream. Let's see that. Prairie Flus. Try that again. I am spelling prairie wrong. And that's why it's giving it to me in French. I spelled it super wrong. That's why it's not giving me anything. There we go. Oh, unless you control two or more basic. Oh, okay. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Hmm. It's a big maybe. I like it, though. Okay. I like this dude being a zombie. I'm trying to think what a zombie would do. Oh, I know. Here. Here. Uh, oh, they never made the enemies. Okay. Four pay two. Um, give me that touch. Two and a black. Oh, wait. Cycling two and a black. When. Bloop. Is cycled. Creature gains. Death touch. Until end of turn. Can you cycle at instant speed? Cycling is done at instant speed. Fantastic. All right, then. So I feel with this... Oh, we didn't do red. Let's do the red one. Cycling two in a red. Uh, so you get a cycle at shock, basically. And I'm going to say there's the battlefield. It deals. Eh. All right, I think that can actually be a lot of fun. We'll make it like a 5-2. A 5-2 feels like a weird place to put a critter. Uh, we'll figure out creature type later. All right, and I think that's actually a good place to end for tonight. We, we've made some very good progress. If we just look at our stats, uh, somehow we ended up with extra white cards. Hmm weird we will fix that 
That shouldn't have happened. That shouldn't have happened. Um, oh, also we accident. Oh, no, that's our, uh, that's our checklist. The rest of this looks right. Uh, the big thing is if we look at our converted mana costs, one's going to be huge because all of our generics are one. But, or actually, no, hold up. I forgot I had already filled in the generics this time as opposed to my old skeleton. Uh, types. Types will do. Types are looking good. And our creature classes. We got some good warriors in there. Got, I think we're good on cats. But you know what? We got a nice spread going now. And we have some of our needed ones. So tomorrow, we're going to do our Sphinx. We're going to get our other necessary creature types that we haven't hit up yet. Because uh, we still need a Sphinx. We still need a Demon. We still need a Goblin. Because we got rid of the Goblin we had. Uh, and we still need a Hydra. But we got the rest of them already. So we're good there. And after that, we can do whatever creature types we want. Cats became an archetype, so we kind of needed them. But everything else, we could do whatever we like. Oh, we didn't do a Minotaur. We need a Minotaur. So tomorrow, we'll get a Minotaur in there. Uh, yeah, we can do this. We can totally do this. We're going to make a core set. We're going to potentially make a couple other completely original sets. Uh, before the end of the month. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make more custom magic cards than anyone else this month maybe we'll see how it works anyway uh thank you all for watching and for those of you who watched this live thank you uh skippy for gifting the subs earlier uh the sub to stormy it was very appreciated i hope you all have a wonderful evening i will catch you at some point tomorrow and we'll do some more magic stuff we might do something else on the side we don't know anyway, have a great evening everyone bye